The stakes are high here in London as one player gets the chance to walk away with the $450,000 first prize. But first, they have to make the final table. And in order to get there, they must compete in the league stages. It's all to play for here at the Premier League. We are in London and the Premier League comes to Asper's Casino, Westfield, Stratford City. Just getting a seat is a huge honour for our players. It's a confirmation that they really are at the top of their game. They've all had enormous success, winning huge events worldwide, pocketing some major cash prizes, lifting trophies, bracelets and massive checks along the way. This really is the best lineup that we have ever seen on the Premier League. It's the Premier League, it's time to film, it's, it's time to start this adventure. This must be one of the most prestigious events of the year for sure. Obviously 16 world-class poker players and it's nice to be a part of that. Well it's always important and always great to win a tournament, but it's especially important when you have a select field and bragging rights that you can take with you forever. If I could somehow possibly win back-to-back -back Premier Leagues, it would mean everything. I own a win, I like money. <laughs> Well, it's a big buy-in, of course, so it would be pretty sweet to win it. I definitely think that I can go through the field and win it all. I feel like I'm fresh and ready to play. Premier League is constant pressure. I'm going to fight and put them all to bed. I'm actually a lot better poker player than people give me credit for. I know I'm the least experienced player here. At the same time, I don't think I'm going to be an easy opponent for a lot of people either. I've never been afraid of a challenge, and I'm not going to start now. I should probably just be putting down the easy games, but there's a certain point where you're like, okay, well, I want to compete against the best. The way to succeed is delivering pain. When I win, it will feel fantastic. Everyone's ready for the challenge. Let's bring it. Last time out, our 16 top pros arrived in London and were divided into two groups of eight. Group A includes Antonio Espandiari, Jonathan Duhamel, Sam Trickett, Marvin Rettenmeyer, Daniel Jungleman Cates, Daniel Negreanu, Phil Helmuth, and last year's winner, Scott Seaver. Group B sees Jason Mercier, Talal Shakerchi, Igor Kurganov, Jennifer Tilly, Tobias Renkenmeyer, Tony G, Phil Locke, and Dan Shack. Each group plays four matches, they are awarded points for where they finish in every game, and at the end of the league stage, the top three players on each table will be guaranteed a place in the final. Those in fourth and fifth positions will play heads up for the last two seats. Previously on Premier League Poker, Group A got the event underway, and this is what happened when the cards went in the air for Heat 1. A new season and a big opportunity awaited our lineup. It was the reigning champion who was knocked out first. Unfortunate. And last year's a runner-up who came seventh. A huge hand between big rivals Trickett and S. Fandiari saw the Brit spike a two-outer and he eliminated the magician. Then it was a quick succession of knockouts. I'm coming with you guys. Finally, the 2010 WSOP main event winner took the first win of the season. So this is confirmation of the league standings after Group A's first match, and Duhamel has raced straight to the top of the board with 16 points. Remember, it's those in the top three that are guaranteed a place in the final after they have played four matches. Daniel Negrano and Phil Helmuth in the playoff zone, but in the bottom three, it's Scott Seaver, Jungleman, and Antonio Esfandiari. Now it's Group B's turn to take to the felt. All the players are eager to get their first match underway. Dan Shack is making his Premier League debut, just about to go into the first heat. Uh, tell me what you think about your draw. Well, I think the draw is good. I'm, I'm not a big sit-and-go player, so I'm, I'm trying to think of this as sort of every day as a final table. You know, if you get in a position to win it, then you'll go for it. But I think initially you have to try to stay out of the bottom couple, at least in the first heat. All the super pros are probably excited to be in this heat. This is the easy heat. Soft players like me with the uh, little talent and little skill, just a big heart to beat, that's all they got to do. It's a kinder, gentler Tony G. I don't know how long that's going to last, and I'm not entirely sure I trust it. Good luck out there. Thank you. Welcome, Premier League Poker 6, 
from the Aspers right. Westfield so Stratford we'll City Casino. Blind Stars in 2000, please. Jesse May joined by great. Phil Helmuth, and this is the first heat of Group B. Now, Phil, you played last night. There was some talk about the draw. Feelings were this was an easier side. What do you think? Well, I mean, I think if you look at if you look at you know the players that on my draw, um, you know, you look at five of the guys that have had arguably the best two years in poker. Uh, you know, I mean, five of the top ten best two years in poker in my heat, and so, um, so yeah, I think I think there's definitely a, a bit of a lopsidedness here. I also feel like there's a bunch of great players in this heat as well, though. Uh, particularly, of course, everyone's going to have their eyes on Jason Mercier, who's uh, really been tearing up the the poker scene the last couple of years, but also the German and the Russian, Tobias and Igor. <laughs> yeah, I know that you know uh, Igor has the respect of a lot of the poker players um, out there. I really haven't played with them much. Uh, of course, there's Tony G. And um, we have the winner of the EPT High Roller in here, Jesse. Yeah, Talal Shikerchi. And there's some great story about Talal. He was actually uh, an internet qualifier for Premier League Poker 4, but now he's here, the real thing. And he's a big time player. He played in the one drop uh, this year. <laughs> I know it's not all about me, but um, I just realized I forgot to put my contact lenses in. <laughs> I can't see Check. the board. Oh, my Lord. I'm wondering if Katie can bring Opening me my purse Opening up as the first pot is, is Talal with the 7 4 I mean, offsuit in early yeah. position. Yeah. And I mean, that's pretty opinionated. Is yeah. He, what's he thinking? I have, I have one of mine. I have the one crazy contact. thing is that oh, yeah. Um, yeah. he bet the flop so on Queen 5 5, and Tony G so called him with that. Ace 9. Uh, actually, I think Tony G, he led this flop from the big blind. He's donked into into Talal, and, uh, and Talal's actually raised this flop with seven high. Oh, no, I'm sorry, they're on the turn now. I'm keeping them in the back. Right. So um, Tony's, Tony's called the flop and led the turn, is that yeah. what's happened? I guess so. This is very interesting. It looked like a Talal bet the flop, and Tony called ah. with ace nine high. Okay. And now Tony's thinking about calling with ace nine high again. He has the best hand. If he were to make this play, it would be pretty amazing. Cyprus. Cyprus was the town. Cyprus was the, the town. The, the country. country of course, <laughs> where the government has exists. Uh, Shikerchi gets <laughs> Tony G off the hand. Great start for Talal. Wow. Uh, I mean, Tony G was just in a spot there where it's the first hand of the Premier League, and you just really don't want to lose a lot of chips. There seemed to be a feeling. Uh, Phil, or just watching the action from Group A last night, that all the players uh, seem to take the same strategy, which is play a little bit tight in the first two levels. Um, was it was that your strategy? And I mean, do you think is is that the right way to play this? It didn't surprise me because the blinds are one and two thousand the first twenty one hands, and then two and four thousand the next twenty one hands. And so, in my analysis, uh, basically, it's so important to finish fourth or fifth in these things that it's just smart to just play super super tight. I figured everybody would do that, and. I wasn't shocked to see that was the case. It was pretty interesting to see um, all these great players just fold and 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 fold. No one even defending with 10-7 suiteds and stuff like that. This is going to be a funky move, but I'm going to do it. I'm just going to get change. And now I'm going to see this whole volume up. Now my stack grows. Now my stack has See, now listen to Phil Lock. On the way over, we were talking about how none of the great players yesterday was defending with hands like 7-6 and 7-8, and we're just folding. And he just jumped right in there with the 7-6 offsuit. And he told me on the way over he couldn't fold those hands and didn't want to. That's what he was saying last night, but he's going to get tested here because Tony's got the big draw. And my guess is he's going to put pressure on it from the button. It's tempting, right? Yeah. It's, it's nice to allow just fires right out. Only G calls, they're saying, in the box. They're all cold. You know, Phil Lock hits a 7 and folds. Best hand, really. <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't play 7 6 offset if you're going to fold when you hit a pair like that. He got like the pre flop pair. strategy, right? <laughs> I just like, I like the. Um, Head to head, and Shikerchi's actually in a good spot here. If if Tony's just going to call and then fold. Uh, not having a good time with numbers right now. This minus and plus is tough to check. Check. So I'm going to stay away from it. <laughs> and check. 
Did Tony miss a bet? Well, you know, Tony, well, not anymore, he didn't. I would have flush. <laughs> Of course, there'll be some people out there saying, who is this Talal Shakerchi? Where is he from? Uh, he's a very successful hedge fund manager here in London, has gotten very serious about poker these last few years. Just won this past week the High Roller event, EPT London, for 400,000 pounds. So he's a man who's getting a lot of respect in the high-stakes poker flush, world, even though he's not a professional. Did you call well, the, the thing I like about Talal is that he loves our game. So here's a guy that's allegedly worth, and I'm not sure, I didn't do the research myself, but he's supposed to be worth hundreds of millions of pounds, hundreds of millions of dollars, and he spent a lot of time 10 tabling online playing $20 buy-in satellites, learning the game, studying the game. Really um, the, the stakes just didn't mean anything to him. He just wanted to, to become really good at poker, and he has become really good at poker. This is a test. It's just a test. I'm closing one. Tobias Renkemeyer there. I'm and so he's a guy who basically doesn't even play a tournament unless the buy-in is $25,000 or above these days. And who's to blame him with his record? Uh, between himself and, and Igor Kurganov, uh, they have dominated, really, the super high rollers in these last two years. It's a different level of player. It's a different, you know, um, you'll see a lot of rich businessmen that, you know, they can't make a final table in a, you know, in a 300-player tournament. They can buy in into a tournament with 30, 40, 50 players in it, some of the super high rollers, and have a shot of doing that. And it's pretty impressive that these guys have crushed the high rollers. It's not easy. It is, it, you know, and... <laughs> without putting a point on it. I mean, there was always sort of a, a knock on your game, Phil, that you only succeeded in the huge fields and that sort of thing. But this year, of course, in addition to your to your World Series of Poker Europe bracelet, you also got, was it fifth place or fourth place in the, in the Million Dollar One Drop tournament, which was one of the toughest fields in poker. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, the One Drop was really a fun event, too. Uh, but it is a, it's a different game when you play super high rollers, right? You have to be, uh, you have to be a lot more outside the box, don't you? And Tobias flopped an ace, and Jennifer has turned three queens to take the lead 15. in this hand. Basically, it's going to be hard for Tobias to fold for 15. He may call with a plan of folding for another bet on the river, or he may just decide to call and call a river bet as well. I'm very call. eager to see how Jennifer fares in this Premier League. Uh, I feel like... All the strengths in her game, Phil, uh, lend itself well to, to Premier League. And uh, if there's any weaknesses in her game, uh, they, they might not be as important in Premier League. She, I think she may do very well here. We were in the taxi on the way home. Speaking of the draw, Jason Mercier said to us, uh, we were talking about him having his run good back because he drew you know, uh, uh, what seemed like a little bit easier lineup than we drew. And he said, well, do you think I even need to wire in my money? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's big talk. That is, that's, <laughs> yeah. he's going to, well, he's going to have to back that up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he minds me saying that. But. <laughs> She's bet this well, Jennifer Tilly, right? She's bet for a size where the odds say pay the man off. And Rinkemeyer does not want to not want to pay off here if he's a loser, though. He made a very good fold here. <laughs> no trouble seeing that I mean, you know, Jennifer, you know, I don't know how a lot. Of, I've played a lot of poker with her, and she's capable of being out there on a limb and, and having nothing there. Right. So when you factor in that, it was an excellent fold. Jesse May in one of these four blocks, because he's always in the booth. say there's absolutely no chance, as long as the buy-in stays at $125,000. <laughs> he's been watching the radio <laughs> dial on these things forever. What's that? Felt like queen, right? What yeah. felt like queen? You had a queen? I could have had a queen. Tony, where's the no more bike? No more bike. Yeah. Right time's over. <laughs> uh, last night I told um, somebody to to 
he did he did a really Dude. smart <laughs> move, and I said it was something about the bike. I forget, but it was he, what? I don't even remember. Helmet and bolts somehow. No, I don't. Maybe Helmuth did something really smart, and I said, get the bike from us so he can come back to the table or something. I don't remember what it was, but it was something. Was he unlucky? Full. He was unlucky, obviously. Oh, I can't he remember. said he play the best hit on his life. He did, he <laughs> did a lot of, yeah. by the way, he did a lot of plays that were like, You're wow, never outside the cold. conversation for too long, Phil. Uh, <laughs> Cole, when he was supposed to fold, but he had folded good hands. Tilly, Cole like, calling from the button with the old seven deuce. He played good. Yeah. He's a good player. He is a good player. He's he stole a pots he couldn't, wasn't supposed to get. It was good. And it's but only 2,000 for the 8-3 yeah. suited. Well, Who can resist? Did, you know, That's what I heard. He played. It was his best hit ever in the Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> that he played. <laughs> in terms of the skill level. <laughs> oh, in terms of skill level. Uh, <laughs> not the result. I mean, the result's a pretty good flop for track. Toby, yeah, as he likes like to be called. Noise in the background of what's actually happening. Thank you. What's back pocket? Jason Mercier, Phil, one of those guys who I think should adapt to the Premier League very well. He's a good games player, you know, the open face Chinese, that sort of thing. I mean, you've played with him quite a bit. He's an excellent open face player. Um, in Europe, I remember thinking, wow, I'll build the game around him at open face. <laughs> By the time we hit the Bahamas a few months later, I was like, you know, I don't really want to have anything to do with him at the open face anymore. <laughs> He actually worked for Bell Labs. Here's the most uh, I guess Tobias is trying to decide whether to fast play this or slow play it. Do you have a preference? Well, I can see the whole card, so I would tell him to slow play it. What's the optimal percentage of that with a 10 percentage point? What is what percent of your network you're supposed to bet each time? Right, right, And it turns out it's the same formula for information packet compression technology setting that will fall. So he was, you know, uh, obviously. He saw the connection between the two? Or yeah. yeah. 10,000 more on Mercier with no pair, but uh, it hasn't really slowed him down yet. happens to be, and then he's shown us the, all these cool things from that, and it's cool. So and he hung out with Ed Thorpe, and he hung out with John Nash and these guys oh, that yeah. would, like, have coffee and mm. talk math and, you know. Uh, Richard now, he's Pine a guy, Jason Mercier. Uh, uh, I guess no more than four or five years ago, nobody had ever heard of him. And then the tear he went on. Uh, World Series of Poker bracelets, EPTs, just about high rollers, everything. And that right now he's ranked two in the world, I think, on that global poker index you were talking about. It's a lot of statistic work with the... Which seems a bit um, yeah, maybe, but not in the player of the year race. Not, oh, right, right, sorry, not for 2013, just sort of Except overall. Yeah, he told me that uh, he's had one cash this year, 25. <laughs> and he went public saying that he had, you know, a losing year in 2012, his first losing year. But, you know, I think when you're a young player, it's easier to have a losing year, you know, when you, when you win everything all the time. You know, um, but a little struggle toughens players up and makes them even better. It's going to happen. If you plan to make a career in poker, you're going to have a rough year, that's for sure. You had, you just came out of uh, the wrong end of about two of them, starting in 2012. Yeah, it's been pretty. It's been a pretty, pretty nice couple of years. That's true. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah. Plus. Yeah. Kurganov yet to move a chip. I'm sure that'll change. Sneaked in an orange one, or is it a red one? Together it's an orange one. Well, we know I can't bet 55. Yeah, I have to go five parking. or six, and if I throw this out, this is the 20. Dan Shack has three bet Phil Locke once, five. now the Dan second Shack time from the, the under the gun attack. position here. Not shark attack, <laughs> shark attack. <clears throat> And if, you know, Phil Locke is, uh, I, do feel like I think he's going to fold. I will say that. <laughs> fold it right away. You're going to know in 30 minutes anyway. Whatever. You said you shouldn't show. Should have had eight high, you know? did it what twice. What do you have? Since Jax. I did it twice to you, I had to show that I had a real high. Maybe he had two know. overs. <laughs> He in knowing him, he had one over. No, I said, I said you had two over. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I had six, seven. <laughs> I don't want to tell you what I had. It was an easy fold, whatever. Yeah. 
the I get so nervous every time Phil's in the pot. I'm so worried he's going to do something wrong, and I'll be embarrassed for him. <laughs> it's too early for me to get committed with queens there, so I just fold. You know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this There's is a good dynamic. Jennifer and Why Phil in the same heat. I like that. Does it happen a lot? Or? She handles herself with so Did much class and poise. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, day, I, did, I just said it before <laughs> Phil could say it about me. Just when he plays on television. <laughs> I agree with you, Phil. I mean, yeah. you know, Jennifer well, and Phil before the draw were saying they didn't want to have each other <coughs> in the same heat, but I think it's like, great well, to have them on the table together. $9,000 on the river with no more action. He mucked his cards after the other guy showed that he only had eight times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, against Mosley, right? It was 66,000 right? euros, yeah. which was Andy worse. Was yeah, like, yeah. 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 It turned yeah, out to be 85,000 pounds. Mucked the winning hand. I yeah. had ace six. I thought I had ace nine, but the, there was a six out there. I was involved too. Like, it was his last money, the kids too. That's what you wanted to do. You wanted to give him a chance. It was yeah. mostly. He, he borrowed money, right? And he came to the table. Yeah. yeah. I guess he was and then he took Phil's money and he disemboweled Jason later on with it. <laughs> sorry, buddy. <laughs> the butterfly cool. effect. I'm sorry, buddy. He would have gone home. If I could have just looked at my cards or turned them over yeah. or anything, you know? <laughs> 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 Players oh, talking about a scene from the 48-hour yeah, cash the, yeah. game in Vienna yeah, last year where Phil Locke folded the winning hand on the river after the action was done uh, in a 60,000 euro pot. Oh, it's got Seaver? I think so, yeah. That's what he said in the last night. It was somebody. Oh, okay, it wasn't you. But <laughs> well, I still would have felt bad if I had hurt you. Well, Scott Seaver wasn't in the, wasn't in the cab with us last night. I think it was Trick was in the cab with us last night. Oh, was it Trick that he crippled? It was, it was one of tricket. those young guns, yeah. He was at the he table. He took $100,000 uh, off of somebody players. later on. He did it. It was Sam Trickett. And, yeah, and he said it was your fault because he was right, broke and he was, was going to go home. Sam, I'm sorry if you were here. I would, yeah, it was Trickett. I would give you some love. Shikerchi has been very aggressive so far, Phil, and Tony's a caller. <laughs> Phil, <laughs> Phil thinks it's good for his image. <laughs> he, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have the best That's hand, you can always win right. by just... After it happens, you got to realize it's not... Anyone was trying to see his cards. It's probably minus 85. It's probably minus 75. Whatever, if I got a 10K <laughs> rebate. Yeah, it was a big... <laughs> he'd been playing for about 50 hours, about but 12. everyone was like, Phil, you have to show your cards. He called you, and Phil was like, no, no, no. And they're trying to get cards away from him. Okay, good lucky, play. You know, nice does. little bet on the river there, <laughs> representing the ace. Yeah, the other guy had ace king. Yeah. And you got a couple of laughs, I guess. Not, not that many yeah, laughs. Plenty more yeah, Premier League yeah, Poker yeah, Six so action to come yeah. Yeah. Like, from Group B in a minute. This is season six of Premier League Poker from London. Group B's first league match is underway here at Asper's Casino. They're playing in a league format where points are awarded for where they finish. And it's so important to get a good start. No one wants to leave the first game with zero points. So let's head back over to your commentators to see how the players are getting on. Sometimes if it was less, less blinds, might go all I mean, there's always been a like debate a in the poker world world phil how good is tony g Nine how well does he play <laughs> when he plays his best can he compete when he plays his best <laughs> It must like not so be much, much of a debate if you're well, asking the question of that way. I don't feel you're tuned in. Wow. To the oh boy! Okay. Part of your game is like probably a 98 or something. You're, I don't feel positive about it. it. Now, now you see that you're doing it to me. What the hell? I'm gonna back. play a bunch of hands with you tonight. 11 call. Wow. Well, the fact that Phil Locke has called in the middle. Is that, oh, yeah, is that going to give Mercy or more yeah, impetus to, to re-raise here? Yes, it will. And it looks like Dan Shack. Phil Locke's snap called 11K with 10-9 suited. Now, we didn't see any of that yesterday. And, uh, and that may well bring Dan Shack. It's a much more reasonable call for Dan with 10-jack suited. He doesn't have the eight-four right. club, That's so he can't squeeze. He has a hand. He doesn't have Jason Mercier is in a really yeah. tricky spot here, I think, oh. especially this early in the, in well, the heat. Well, he doesn't have to worry about Phil Locke or Dan Shack. He has to worry about Tony G. And so this would be normally a re-raising situation for yeah, most man. people. Right. I like That's that. I like nine. your style. Punish these guys for playing pots with you. You know, teach them a lesson. Lesson number one. Wow, what a huge <laughs> spot for G early on. I don't know what to do. Fuck nine. Like 28 is so cheap, right? At least to try to isolate it 
so we can share the pot together. <laughs> For the I'll people at home, if he calls, things can be different. If he raises, things can be different. And if he pulls, things can be different. All three things lead to a different domino. Still thinks he's still in the conversation. I just don't know what tonight is like. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I forgot. So much I'm not even there. You're on a roll. I'm going to make it 100. There you go. I'm going to make a traditional. Re raise. Just raise. T test his hand. Test his strength. I really should just get in there and punish all you. <laughs> you should. <laughs> I should just get in there and punish everyone. I'm just testing the strength. Yeah, I'm going to wait for a better time, though. This is wow. yeah, I had the call. Good lay down. I was 100% folding if you fold. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Well, I can't. I can never fold my hand. With Jason but I can't put it left on. back at to act, you call. Yeah. He He's supposed to complete the action with no, like nines no, or something. No, no, no. <laughs> He's almost always raising that. Well, I don't know that. I, don't know. I know what you'd be doing here, Phil. You should, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Sadly, I, I think I'd be folding, yeah. There's a version of me that might have folded like 10. I mean, if you, if you think about it, with those two players behind, it would have been un really unusual for Tony G to be making a move here in a four-way pot from the button. Wouldn't he rather, if he had a drawing type of hand, have a look at the flop and try and win a big one? Or do you think he could be? I mean, could he be at it here? Well, I think what Jason's asking himself is, does he have ace-king or does he have a small pair? Right. And if he thinks that, he may go with it, even if he has ace-king. Yeah, Jason's supposed to get away from this, and I think he will, but... Um, He's looking in good shape, though. He's taking time, so it's not <laughs> like he doesn't have a... I'm pretty sure, he, yeah. You're, you're, like, thinking he probably doesn't have aces, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> but I don't want to out loud, but, like... You know, finishing in eighth place is just... That's zero points. Good fold, Jason. That's a great fold. It's an excellent fold. <laughs> Johnny G. Uh, you I'm couldn't always, just complete the action. I ju you just couldn't do it. I mean, I would have if I had known that was going to happen. I know, kid. I was going to crack everyone. If you guys called, no, you're I, all tough. I had to go crack No, 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 boys. I cracked. Uh, I wish I could just, I wish the flop was out there. I, I wish I could do it with no hands. Bro. I think you had two kings. I was hoping you had two kings. You were hoping I had kings? You had two aces? I had two aces. I should have just called him. And it may show that Jason has had a look at the Premier League point structure, has done a little bit of thought. As you said, Phil, you play this thing a couple of times, you realize that those bagels are fatal. Oh, my God, you get some aces and sevens. Oh, and that's happened to me a couple of years where, you know, it's just, that can just be so brutal. Look at Tony G. He's already made a flush and picked up pocket aces. Man. He was he was quiet for about the first four hands, and that's over. Flop here between Toby and Dan Shack. It was someone who couldn't make it. Mr. Dan Shack and me had something. Something for everybody. I think they're probably familiar with each other's games. Five. They both play a lot of high rollers. Yeah, and it's it's a world you don't move in as much, Phil, because you know your schedule's so busy. You're playing mostly the World Series events, but uh, I think you know when you talk about Australia, Monte Carlo, all the twenty-five thousand and up events, uh, th th these two face off all the time. Check. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I haven't played a lot of high rolls. I played the million dollar buy-in, <laughs> and for, s for some reason I have not played a lot of like 25Ks, 50Ks. There were two 25Ks where I was in town and just didn't feel like I was ready to play either one of them. Um, I did play a couple of the high rollers at, in the Bahamas, however. The uh, million dollar one drop, uh, really, I mean, that, that was an, a special, special event in poker, wasn't it? And, uh, of course, we got three of the top five here from that event. Yourself, Sam, and Antonio. Average. Per four 
Was that the biggest buzz you've ever had in a poker tournament? Sitting down and, and then playing for 18 million at the final table? I mean, you must have just been so pumped. The biggest buzz was the bubble. Imagine, yeah. there's 10 of us sitting at the table. 10th place gets nothing. Ninth place gets a million dollars. 10th place, nothing. Right. Ninth place, a million. That was a scary moment, and I thought, oh my god. This thing is, we're going to be on the bubble for six, seven <laughs> hours. Who knew that the bubble lasted like 15 minutes? Phil, yeah. is there an unattractive shadow on my face? There's not an unattractive shadow on your face. Okay. Not anyone. That's very important. Now, Tony G, there's no amount of shadowing or light that can help Tony G. <laughs> he's just trapped with what he's got. <laughs> you, on the other hand, can go anywhere. Yeah. I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you're a bit qualified. Right. Look at that, look at that. It's all right. Yeah, I feel. You might like chip in for my first operation. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely chip in. Hey, he's looking a little rough and ready. Uh, G's been uh, relegated, I think, three out of five times in the Premier League. He's the only man who's played every Premier League season and has never won. I think it. I think it eats him up inside. Plus, I think it does. I don't think he cares. <laughs> You're probably <laughs> right. <laughs> He's too busy with the Lithuanian dancing with the stars and the Lithuanian national basketball team. <laughs> he he has become a man of the world. Four plus two players. We got a raise to six from Locke on the button check. and check flatted from the small blind with the suited ace. Check. A card that improved both <laughs> players' hands anyway. <laughs> and he's bet about a peanut. Six and I think if it weren't Dan Check, Phil would consider raising here. Does Dan have a tight reputation? A little one. And there's the Phil Lock that I know in Premier League. He got there, <laughs> and a way they can't even see. <laughs> He's a man who gets there. Man. <laughs> that was the perfect card of the deck, I mean, wasn't the it? the perfect card. I mean, like, even a king Dan might see. <laughs> it can't be a queen here, right? Phil cannot have a queen. And he would have bet a five on the flop. Is it, do you see it like that? Well, that's how Dan sees it. Is a call to call? Well, they both knew it. Locke gets the pot. I knew you had a spade. First level in the books, and Tony G in the lead. Do you think this is an uh, accurate reflection of what's happened so far? I mean, it's just, it's, the, the match is so young, and, you know, Jason was a little unlucky, um, and Tony was a little lucky and uh, no one's really stood out for playing a particular way. There is still plenty more action to come from the Party Poker Premier League as the eight players continue to battle it out here in Group B's opening match. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Party Poker Premier League Poker 6. This season, we're at Asper's Casino in London. We still have a full table in Group B's first league match. Let's head back over to your commentary team. Yeah, you just, if you got to play, I mean, what are you going to do? You have to play. It did feel it's like there was a little battle in the Group A early on, sort of between Antonio and maybe yeah. Scott Seaver for who would be kind of the table captain as far as table talk went. Uh, has that battle been won? Do you think Antonio is kind of, he likes to be in charge, doesn't he? Well, Antonio likes to, uh, you know, make other people I might have King do things. King seven's a good hand, don't knock King seven. Uh, you know, mix it up, so yeah, he, he has a way of, yeah. You've seen it all before. Jason will call here, yep. Raise is just getting a touch bigger than they were the first level. Lock making it eight. Nobody heads up. Mercier is kind of thinking to himself, you know, if I could just beat Phil Lock in a sizable pot, at least I could get him to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and oh he my might. God, what Speak a of the flop. devil. 
<laughs> now Locke's checking for sure. Check. Whenever he hits something, he checks, so. But it, I mean, could he be checking to raise, or is there, there's not enough chips in the pot? No, he's to gonna call, I think. It's 10,000. This is gonna be super deceptive. I mean, if a seven or a queen comes off, uh, Jason is going to find himself in bad shape for a lot of money. At this stage, Locke's playing this like he's got maybe a bad jack or an ace nine, something like that, two tens, right? I mean, you would never consider that he's got an up and down straight draw. It really doesn't look like that. And so Jason, you know, has to really bet enough to get rid of a king ten, maybe. But I'm pretty sure that Jason feels like Phil could be drawing dead here, except maybe he could have went on a belly buster, but not on a open ender. Yeah, if it comes to seven, it could be lights out. Well, He's in the tank here, Locke. I mean, there is no play but a call, is there? I mean, he could try something crazy. Um, yeah, all of his moves worked in the last frame, really. <laughs> seven or queen, baby. Not right now. That's a great card for Jason. He's Check just um, completely yeah, safe here. Could I get a napkin as Jason has to decide how much I want to bet. With 88,000 the pot, I wouldn't be surprised if he bets 43 or something like that. It, it feels like Locke is kind of topping out at a, a medium one pair sort of hand, right? So he wants to get paid <laughs> off by that. Fifty-two. Fifty-two thousand. Pretty right on. Wow, this is just Hollywood, isn't it? I mean, never in a million years would Phil Locke make a check raise river bluff oh. <laughs> on the first heat of the Premier League for his snack. With eight players still alive. Yeah. I think I, I think he'd sooner think jump off a cliff. I have a straight either, so I just, <laughs> you know, pretending to have a straight. Would have been I had a hand. It wasn't a, a six-seven. I did not have a six-seven. I would have been involved had I. You didn't have six-seven. No, I didn't. You would not I would have. You would have heard about you it. You didn't check call the flop. I double checked on too. Jack nine five and and a four on the turn. You didn't. Nope, I didn't. I'm just you letting you know. You can't be 100%. And, and you can't be 100 percent. And you sure. didn't fold the river with the nuts. It might have. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, it's a hard part to happen. I have folded good hands before for, you know, decent money. Yeah. Yes. You look cute when you're folding. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you it's probably got a lot of that today. Right? <laughs> it's drifting it's down. when you fold. You know. Well, hopefully that I can pocket. stay into the very end and I can... I just want to be able to fold the last hand in the tournament. That, that's good. Keep it safe. Can I do that? I can fold my way. So in when the tournament was, and they said, what was your plan? And he said, my plan is to always see the next hand. Is that what you said? I just want to see every hand in the tournament. I don't yeah. care if I win them or lose them. I just want to be able to see and play each hand. Have the opportunity to fold or play each hand. That's all I want. I don't care. I don't care how it happens. He's not asking for much. But everyone much. wants that. Like that. Just a top <laughs> two finish. Do you? Uh, yeah. You want to play boost? Oh. No, I'm not interested in that. No, I just want to have fun. Phil Locke folding the threes up front. Fun? Actually, playing good's good. That, that leads to fun. Yeah, so play fun. good, fun. Yeah, that feels pretty I, opinionated I here. I mean, there's so much value in flopping a set in this format, isn't there? There is. Early stage, too. Yeah. Oh. I don't beat myself up when I make mistakes. Though. That's the thing. Move on. But I would like to just see every hand in the damn tournament. That would be like... No. Here he comes, the regress with the 4-5. Yes. That's the guy who won the high roller a couple of days ago. Yeah. And so I'm he's ratcheted tight, up right now. When I played and uh, that strategy is better with Antis than it is without Antis. It is um, a, something else, oh, Phil. I'm I mean, not, uh, really Talal was telling me that he watched nearly the like entire TV. live stream yesterday, so he had a look at what everyone was doing and still came to the conclusion that it's, uh, it's not bad to come out of the blocks fast. And that's what he's done. <coughs> I'll tell you I the... 
sorry. What were you going to say? No, I don't. I was just going to say the plain truth is I haven't gotten any hands. <laughs> and I'm not that kind of person that can play bad hands like they're good hands. So if I ever enter the pod, it means I have one of the top 10 starting hands, maybe one of the top eight starting hands, because it's so important to get points. And if I don't connect with a flop, I just give up. So it's kind of a good thing to get involved with me. I thought they were going to separate you guys at two different tables. They should have. I wish we they didn't did. want to be at the same table. Part of family. I yeah, hate yeah. playing could with have, Phil. It could have been it like the top seats. Seat. Mm -hmm. No one would have. Yeah. yeah. I thought we, we, I asked, we asked Beiju to separate us because Phil's like, the, they, he's they always the little voice random. in my head telling me I'm playing wrong. And when no. he's at the same table, the little voice is a lot louder because he's closer. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah. in a way, you limit your chances of making the final together, you know? Right, right, you do. that's the worst part of yeah. this. Also no team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that'll be good, team you guys don't want to be together, it's only one team thing anyway, yeah. That's <laughs> it. No, we're both going to make it into the final. That's our plan. We're coming in first and second today. We're going to be drinking champagne on the flight home. <laughs> and we'll give Antonio some, too. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to look after him, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> he had that pen on the river come yesterday. He had it all in uh, tens versus queens. He had queens in and then pen came out. I'm sorry for him already. Sam Triggett. Sam Triggett. It's going to be many years yeah. before Mike anyone feels one. sorry for well, Antonio. Well, first. That's for sure. He's doing close. Yeah, I'm happy. I think when you think about seats at this table, Kurganov likes his spot. Uh, every time it's his button, it's lock and shack in the big in the blinds. Yeah, but there are no pushovers. I mean, Shaq re-raised the first hand out of the box. That's true. And look I at mean, this. You know Phil Shaq's going to defend, and you know that Phil Lock plays hand, so it's actually not a good spot for Kurganov. He did well. No, fourth. I don't remember. Fourth is good if you do the fourth on the first heat. It's nice, it's nice start, and if yeah. you just improve every time. Yeah, from See now, Tony G's right. Fourth on the first heat, which Daniel did, would have been fine yeah. with me yesterday. Oh, did he win I, mean, I think he had a good hand. In it. Sure, fourth was six <laughs> points. Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a race. Right, and Locke, of course, a, a fairly yeah. strong yeah. hand here, just flatting in the Play small blind. Interesting yeah. to see how he like plays really it from well. here. He's got them completely overcoated. Yeah, weirdly enough, actually lower than average. Yeah, what a great oh, right. point. <laughs> Six point two five right. points each. Wow. How many points each? Expectations. Six point two five. Then you get six. Oh, Phil. Why did you lead? Being six point two five. You hate that. Oh. Yeah. Third third pretty good. Time Why did you point. lead? <laughs> 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 he couldn't help himself. Four thirds. You're right. Yeah. Points wise. But if everybody wins. Everybody who is a winner is a different well, You know, Dan, Dan, you know you're folding. Don't take, well, he's taking a little long there for this fold. Yeah. But. Yeah, the win is a big thing. You know. Kurganov may call 10. Phil is going to hate himself if Kurganov just folds here. Just can't imagine that flop missed everybody like you're that. You're contemplating too long pre flop. <laughs> I kind of have a hand. I don't know if you wanted to raise or flat. Why did you hear that? Right, you Igor know, misses so nothing, so Phil. Sometimes it's really weird. You can have a strong, person weak, medium, and the whole range. You can nearly really raise it. Well. Yeah. I'm going to call with that. I, I might call with really Queens weird. just as often as 6-8 of Clemson. It's just yeah, like it's a weird, weird spot. Yeah. But they don't take right, so it's good game. Uh, okay. yeah, well, that makes sense. But, you know, you end up tipping out a lot at the end of the night. This is how we felt. I mean, but at the same time, the weather was very bad. It's better than them breaking, you know, three dollars every hand. Right. I never notice. Phil always notices exactly how much rate comes out of the pot. Yeah. And then I went to like I went juice, to a game like and I had a really good time and I won some money. Right. And then Phil said, yeah, I, I go, like wow, this guy really loves poker. I said, he had dealers and two tables and a valley park. And Phil goes, that was a professional game. Next time you want to come to my game, I'm going to give you your rate back. So Phil's always right. Well, this is the first sort of loose three bet from.
from Tobias Rankemeyer. No, she doesn't stop, right? What? Am I supposed to stop talking? Bill's, Bill's like, what? Talking. I don't think you should talk about home games where there's guys well, talking and heat. Well, it seems. No, I just don't think you, If you end up at those places, you should find, figure out a way to spend less time there. Okay, well. And the reason Talal is having trouble with folding this, Phil, is something about the dynamics between these two. He obviously he knows wow. that Tobias is going to be okay. going to be three betting a lot. <laughs> and I mean, this is a strong play, isn't it? It's really strong. But again, I think I, it's very strange. This guy just won. Till I just won the high roller. Okay, like a couple days ago. And so he's used to all of his moves working. He's used to playing with an Annie. He's used to playing fast. And so, in here, he's correctly deduced that a four bet should win him the pot here. And you have to give him credit for this move. I mean, it's uh, it's very kind of above the rim. And uh, let's see if Rinkemeyer can somehow feel the weakness. If Rinkemeyer moves in, he wins the pot, but I think he's going to fold. Tala, Tala, what are you doing? Yeah, finally pick up a hand and then, and this happens. Sometimes you just got to swallow your pride a little bit, right, in poker. I like the fact that he started talking to him and said, what are you doing, what are you doing? And so that gives him a chance to, you know. No! No way! Come on! And, Great and, play. And, 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 Great and Phil, play. I mean, the stakes that he's playing this for, that's like, he's, that's basically 125,000. He's just, he's just shooting it down the drain. Well, not really. I mean, it's, uh, I, I really like this play. It was just really strongly designed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta yeah, give him credit. I do whatever. He feels like he's it's talking anyways. anyways. I do. I guess it's oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I was supposed this is to easily the strongest play we've seen so far in the Premier League. The fact that it's come early in the first heat with eight players left, that all adds to the to the dynamics here. This is the strongest play of the Premier League for sure. And uh, just no doubt. And the fact that it came early, you diagnosed it well. It's uh, that's that's why. It was the speech followed by the raise. Don't think I can fold this one. Nice photo of him, too, on the wall. And he may be on the wall of champions at some point. I was thinking, should I even consider it? Like, make it 69 and then fold it? Yeah. That would be really unfair to, to, to you know. John Duffy yeah. said once he was in a tournament and he picked up aces preflop and he had a terrible feeling. If he wasn't at the television table, he would have folded, but he thought that would look bad. And so he played it and that hand busted him out. What he, but he made a mistake. Once he has a premonition that he can't win, he should, he's supposed to go all in. Raised to 11,000. And not play it. Just I don't remember how the hand went down. I'm sure he, he played it very clever. Without, yeah, but just go all in. He and probably, he probably got it all. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> play safe. <laughs> The safest way you can yeah. play aces. Probably 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 I've been under the go with aces and made it like uh, 420 big blinds before. My he, whole stack. He so said I'm, he wanted to fold. Like, I don't want to play this hand. Just and he here, said, how would that look? I'm the president of the EPT folding pocket aces pre-flop. And so he played it instead. And yeah. boom, knocked him out of the tournament. The two last significant times where I had aces and slow played, I would have won a monster pot, but instead won a very small pot. The last, I did it two times in the last like year. And it was a disaster both times. I could have won so much more. Eh, that's okay. Shakerchi now on the rebound with top pair <laughs> against the flop set. And pot. this is the reason you can't be too active in the early levels, right? You, you might get in some cooler spots post-flop. This is a guy who plays a $250,000 buying high roller, Dan, against another guy that plays a $250,000 high roller. And, uh, you know, Talal, Basically, this is extraordinarily bad timing for him. He just four bet at light, and now he's come back with top pair the very next hand, and so the emotions are running just a little bit hot. They have to be no matter who you are. And so now this could be very dangerous for him. And the fact that Dan Shack has led into him could really boost this pot. And there it goes. Is Shakurchi willing to play for stacks? Well, you know, here if Dan re-raises big, he's letting Shakurshi off the hook. Basically, Talal should fold this hand. I'm not saying he will fold this hand, especially based on the last hand. But if Dan puts a re-raise in here, Dan has to have Jack-10 beat. There's no draws here that make any sense. It's not like Dan just let out with 8-9 and is just going to, you know. Perfect. 
the interesting thing is what Dan's supposed to do here. And I think he's going to re-raise because he wants a shot to get all the money in right now before any weird cards come off. Seems like that's the plan. Yeah, right, right. It's actually... Yeah, you're winning money with folding, but it act it's actually... Well, Shikarchi did get off it, and yeah. that at least shows that he's not willing to throw it all away here light. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, when he put in the raise, uh, Talal should know if he gets re-raised, he has to fold. <laughs> and it's different if maybe the 6-7 of, you know, yeah, spades is on board with the jack of diamonds, where you can put someone on the flush draw, but there was no hand... Oh, you mean the elevator guy with the... There was no oh, hand that he could elevator. beat, um, assuming Dan wasn't bluffing. That's weird. Oh, Dan Shack moving up a little bit, and <coughs> for Talal Shakerchi, he's uh, found coming out strong from the traps in the first two levels, has gone the same watery grave as others before him. He's got to fight from behind right now. Sometimes if I'm wearing a beanie, I have to play cat and mouse. Okay, we've got action here, and there is no way out of this for Tony G if Talal re-raises here, is there? No way out. Get it back on, but you just have, and then sometimes I see them from 20 yards. I'm coming towards them. I can read their body language that they're skewed in, and before they have a chance to move, micro past that first millimeter, it's off. Tony usually gets them in quick. Then I slip 20 yards back on. You know, it's a lot of work though because they're on it. <laughs> they're, they're, they're hard workers. You know? <laughs> they take their job seriously. It's tough. As soon as they say. Uh, I mean, after seeing all yeah. the action that Talal yeah. has given, it would actually be wrong of Tony top. to do anything but re raise here, wouldn't it? Let them yeah. relax. I know what's going to happen. Let them just enjoy their life. You know? The money has to go in. Yeah. That's our first cooler of the night. And I think. For, for all of you out there who. Enjoy seeing Tony G when he gets riled. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen Tony G even come close to folding a pair of queens. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> 71,000. I think this is pretty academic at this stage. If you look at stack sizes, I mean, Talal really doesn't have enough back for Tony to fold any two cards here, so. Talal's milking it just a little bit. Like yeah. I really don't understand what's taking so long here. Could this though. be considered a little bit of a rub down? All in. Three ways all in. <laughs> well, it's not over yet. And Tony G, of course, has still got a couple hundred thousand back. But this is not going to make him happy if he doesn't hit a queen. A queen. Oh! oh! Speak That's too cool. soon! Dan Shack oh, folded a queen a under the gut. Oh. No! Wow. No, 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 no! That's sicker than anything else. <laughs> Beyond sick. Beyond sick? <laughs> Every board should be oh. held like that. Why wouldn't you do that? It just brings in more. He got time. called that twice. Just, just rig the board. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Tilly Tilly got exactly called like, back yeah, twice. Once for one and once in one hand. <laughs> that was a good line. That was really that funny. That was a good line. <laughs> this Talal Shikerchi though, chip leader. How about that? I mean, who's done the most with what they've got, if you could make that sort of comment? Uh, I'd say that Tobias or, um, or maybe Jason. Yeah, Jason's only 16,000 off his starting stack, and he really has had nothing to speak of. His best hand, he had to fold free flop. The competition is fierce here at Asper's Casino in Westfield, Stratford City. Now it's time for a short break. When we come back, find out who is the first player to be knocked out of Group B's match. Plenty more from this unique event after this. Welcome back to Asper's Casino in London for the Party Poker Premier League. It's the English businessman and high stakes cash player Talal Shakerchi who's the chip leader. Now the blinds are going up. We can find out if he can maintain his aggressive strategy here in Group B's first league match. Well, we 
finished uh, two levels, know. and yeah, the, the aggression and the, like, the uh, factor. Any surprise that uh, Shakirchi that is, is top of the pops there? Shakirchi's just pressed it. I mean, <laughs> when he does play, you can see how aggressive he is. Yeah, Talal is hardly checked at all. The interesting thing is, well, because Talal's a smart guy, will he adjust? You know? Yeah, it's almost like he's now had a chance to play two heats. I mean, this is kind of like his second second spot, you know. Uh, sorry, his second uh, go at the at the apple. He's a smart guy. He knows he played a lot of hands. Well, this could be redemption for Tony G. He's picked up the queens again. And I think it's fair to say if that he runs into the if Jennifer had the kings right now, Tony would put his hand through the wall. <laughs> Wow. How much do you have left, Tony? Oh. Well, she's going to have a think about trying to shove on him here. Is it, uh, is it reasonable? How much? No, no. This is 36 and that's okay. 20. Uh, she covers him by about 100K. <laughs> I'll leave it out there. Check. Check. Well, Tony checked out a position. And Jennifer's capable of making a bluff here. And, wow. And Tony is very capable of making a frustrated pass. <laughs> he really is. I mean, <laughs> geez, he's opened himself up to this, Phil. How, why did he check that flop? Was that a disaster? Well, I mean, if he checked the flop, he was planning on calling, but the problem is that she bet more than he was thinking. You know, like 20, 30,000 is a pretty easy call here. Wow. Look at that, the frustrated fold. Show him, Jennifer. You're very lucky he raised pre flop. Why? What would you have had? 89 of spades. 89 of spades, that would be a good hand on the turn yeah. and the flop. Yeah. But the turn, it's so strong. Well, if you'd been in the hand, right, and there's three in the hand, I wouldn't have checked the flop, so maybe you wouldn't have got there. He's paying. Tony G up. is looking very frustrated. You know the man who has played every Premier League season yeah. is now in eighth place. <laughs> Looking at my caches, I mean, I've the European champion, the Asian champion, had great results. I've won everywhere I've played, and uh, yeah, I'm a pretty successful player, I think, for, for a guy that just does it for fun. The Premier League is constant pressure, it's constant banter, fighting, misconduct perhaps, r races, we've had races running around. You don't know what's going to happen. I'm the only player that's played every Premier League, which I'm very proud of. I've had great finishes, fifth, third and second, but maybe this year is the year for, for my, my luck to happen and my, my run to come. Tony G is like not it. having a good time so far alive. tonight. This yeah. is definitely good the run. event that has eluded him yeah. so far, yeah. and it looks yeah. like he will be struggling again in this heat, as he now has just over 170,000. Go play. The queens are out there again. Oh, in a perfect spot for Lack to pick them up on the button where he's played every Wait, hand so far. He really has. <laughs> I mean, Jason doesn't want to have ace four option. Oh, 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 oh my God. Jason's going to re-race for sure. I mean, he's going to make it around. He's going to make it around 31,000, what are the 35, somewhere in that range. I just wonder how different this is than the two threes, which was the hand he three bet in the same position last time. Because with the nines, if you get four bet, you, you don't really want to fold them, do you? Do you three bet anyway? He has eight. to. 38,000. Wow, Phil called. That's interesting. And called quickly. Very interesting. So that gives Jason track. nothing. That gives Jason oh, something. Oh, he's flopped a set. Wow. And that is the same. That's a really, really good flop for Jason because He's thinking in his mind, Phil may have called with king queen here. Or ace, well, yeah, I mean anything. It, it smashes Phil's range, right? Yeah. But 
Phil's going to call 33 here. You know, when Locke made that smooth call pre-flop, Phil, you know you're going to have to make some tough decisions oh. later on in the hand, right? And that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I think if he re-raises, I, th I don't know, maybe Jason couldn't get away. He's not slowing down, and you can't blame him. Locke now with a tough decision. Obviously, he knows he can't beat a king. I think Phil is good enough to get away from this hand now. That's a tough spot, you know, when you when he just called with the before the flop, um, you know, he, he you're right, he put himself in a position where he was gonna have to make some tough decisions later. Sure, if the flop comes at eight high, he looks like a genius. Pull the river out. Pull the river. Lays it down and it. wants the rabbit card. Wow. No! Not the jack. <laughs> I check you check? Yeah. I want a jack. <laughs> a jack or two. I had jack deuce. What am I supposed to do? It looks so <laughs> easy when we're sitting up here, doesn't it? You just see all these hands come out, Phil. <laughs> queens, queens, kings, Crazy. ace king. And Jason has a little oh, chip lead. Look at that. Yeah. Jason's had a little run good, I mean, you know. They're just not <laughs> Yeah, and, 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 you know, Locke's going to be tough as a short stack because he's, I think he's going to get very nubbly with his, with his stack. He does not want to get that bagel. I think Phil Locke knows how to play super tight. Um, that was his old game plan, so I think he's counting himself down, saying, oh, wow, I still have 200,000. That's okay. Makes you feel better about, about the money you win afterwards. Yeah. Is this a three betting spot for Jennifer? Wait for a low and then go. She may do it. Let's see. Like at Leon's, right? Yeah. Go down to hundred thousand. Like Forty-five. Bam, 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 and then. It's a yeah. pretty big three bet too. That was uh, like winning the lottery. And Dan Shack's hand against Jennifer. We'll see how well he knows Jennifer Tilly's game because <laughs> he might think this looks he like. He might a, call her. He might call? He might call her. I mean. I, win the to get your it's you, a tough spot. You don't I think mean, he can fold here. You don't think he can fold? Yeah, he could fold. She said, is she going to go for the four bet? And then you won the lottery. Right? <laughs> wow. This is strong, Phil, but it does open up for a Rankemeyer. Oh, my goodness. I, I actually... Wow, this is another one of those, you know, buttony spots, but this is not the ace-deuce against the ace-three, but still. And, I mean, he thinks he's bluffing here, right? He doesn't... Is he doing this for value? Um, he's thinking that Jennifer would probably re-raise with any ace and that he probably has the best hand here. I don't think he's bluffing. Well, Tilly opened up the can of Cracker Jacks, and now she's going to have to deal with it. <coughs> I think she probably, she probably hates all her options here, but uh, fold has to be the play. She has to fold, <laughs> really. But <laughs> let's see. <laughs> her and Dan obviously have some history. I mean, he knows. Yeah. For him to just cold four better. I mean, not cold for, but for him to just four bet in this spot, he he knows his customer. The other thing is, Dan, if she shoves, I mean, he has a lot of chips in there, and he knows that she would have probably already made a move with ace queen. So. I guess I was wrong when I said you can't win against me. <laughs> I had to go all in or fold. You have over 300? It was a mountain too far to conquer. I think you're right. It does hurt losing 40 to Shack Attack. I feel like it's every day in my life losing something to Shack oh, Attack. Oh, come on. Well, luckily we don't play I, every day. I know your mind games. <laughs> <laughs> the mind games don't work with me. I know you're a trader. I don't play mind Street. games, but I recognize them.
Welcome back to the Party Poker Premier League Poker 6, where 16 players are playing in a league format to accrue points for a final table. I always, I always look at my hand, I'll be honest. Well, I would have had to go all in because probably had the best hand pre-flop, post-flop. Mm -hmm. Kurganov where I was at. spotted the marked card. Shaq would outplay me and I'd be humiliated on Place national 15. TV. Pass. Pass. Phil Locke, he's nothing's going to slow him down. Yeah, is this a bit desperate right now? Is it? Trying vainly to get into uh, back into the fray. Now this is a good spot for Talal. Oh, he just called. Interesting. A good spot to squeeze because he knows that Locke doesn't want to get Locke involved. Locke only has 195. Yeah. yeah, and Locke's been raising a fair amount of hands. So that call's fine though. Check. Wow, and Phil has flopped the nut flush draw. And Jennifer has a straight draw. He has, but you know, you're not loving your draws as much in when there's still eight players left as, as you are in a multi-table tournament when you can just make chips. 27,000. I mean, now, in, in a regular MTT, Almost anyone would just be shoving with Phil Locke's hand right now, Phil. Yep, yep, yep. He and may shove anyway. And this is one of the problems with this format. If you see too many flops, right, you're going to get in spots like this where you know you have to shove and you know you can't shove. Right. <laughs> I mean, what's he going to do? Could <laughs> he gonna pass? Shove. <laughs> he's he's not gonna passing. Shove. He's going to shove. Well, I think he's going to raise, but he could call here. I mean, it's a, you know... He's going to try and leave himself. He's going to try and leave himself with some peanuts back. He's gone for it. He's got heart. He's got heart. I want to bluff the turn if I miss. Splash down. I think he's right. He's got a splash. And Phil is back. He is back. Well, he certainly he certainly had to go low there. He had to go under the limbo bar. <laughs> Look at his sign. <laughs> it was. It was. And, and is he saying to himself right now, okay, buddy, okay, you got that one through. Slow down a little bit now. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure he's saying that. He's gotten away. Everything he's done for a couple of years in this Premier League has been, has worked wonderfully well. And I haven't agreed with a lot of the plays he's made, but it's worked really well. And that's a beautiful thing about poker is a lot of styles work. 47 hands. It's quite tight, actually. Uh, the fact that no one has knocked themselves out. G, though, slipping off the bottom of the pack here. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I mean, he, he lost a big pot with queens. It wasn't like he took himself out. And then he had lost more money with two queens. So um, I think you have to look at who put themselves in bad shape. And um, that's a factor. He's got the journal going. He's got the hand journal. Post. You can do it too, Pass. Tony. You just get a little something going, puff it up, get some hands, you know. Boom, then you have chips, you're Pass out of that zone. Pass. That was just a don't nice do hand. it to me. Do it to, yeah, I had it really. It was, I couldn't lose. But do it to somebody else, don't do it to me. Pass. Pass. What's the difference? We're all friends here. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm have to give him a mic. I want to get Sammy, how you feel, Jennifer? I want to be a sweet. <laughs> The pall that hangs over this table is the fear of being the first out. And that's a, it's a tough nut to crack. It really is. Raise. I don't know. 43. 42. Interesting spot for Jennifer. Uh, she doesn't know. I don't think that... Here's the thing. The basically... Nothing's been released as far as the hands go yet, but I think she's getting a little frustrated. And she might, she could make a move here. Just so much easier to fold. Button small blind. I mean, ace nine, uh, traditionally a pretty strong hand on the. You can see her, she's sensing something here. There's no talk. She's sensing something's wrong. Yeah. And the question is will she pull the trigger or not? It's not always easy to pull the trigger. Do I have more than him? That's a good question. 
Yeah. It's not, you know, and, and if there's one thing that Jennifer's accustomed to, Phil, I mean, it's she's accustomed to being tested by the big boys, she right? She plays with the high rollers, um, both in cash games and in tournaments, and so... <laughs> Oh, this point system sucks. You have like 8,000 I can't play my game. <laughs> well, that's true and not true. What you can write. have like the best, the absolute best hand like aces one day. And uh, perhaps that was, that's what makes it great. You can't, I you can play the, your I game. Just have the best she hand sensed something the there. She did. And, um, uh, you know, sometimes you could tell. You could tell. You can see it sometimes. And um, she didn't pull the trigger, though. The points system slowed her down, and Phil Locke, trying to give her advice, trying to help her out, may have heard her there, saying, "Hey, you have to get, you know, you have to get some points before you go out." And then, she, and then she didn't pull the trigger when she had to. Yeah, she's got to stop listening to Phil. That's 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 one thing. But uh, they don't discuss poker strategy. I rode over with Phil and Jennifer, and they don't they don't discuss. Uh, well, yeah, Jennifer's quite capable in her own right. You know, she absolutely uh, has a World Series of Poker bracelet. She's won some big open field tournaments as well. Um, she's no slouch. She loves the game. Two players. just unconscious. Another set. This time he didn't re-raise and he flopped a set. Pretty good timing. If he would have re-raised, he would have won the pot, but instead he has Jason on a flush draw when he has a set. Now, it won't have escaped Jason's attention that the last time Talal raised on the flop, he passed to the three bet. Yeah, Jason knows that, but, but I think that the younger generation really hates to raise with they really hate to put themselves in a spot where they can't call with a draw. <laughs> so he's more likely to call here. Um, Jason is under re-raise. He sniffed it out perfect. Of course, the worst card in the world for him would be the Queen of Diamonds. <coughs> that would be one of the better cards in the world. Ah, uh, yes. Of course, the river is still to come. And from Talal's point of view, there's obviously, there's no reason to check back that turn. He's got a set. Jason, I don't think, is fearing a higher flush here. And so he's going to raise it. The question is, you know, how much? It's also possible that he makes a smooth call because he thinks maybe Talal <coughs> doesn't have a diamond and is drawing dead. But I think Jason's going to suss it out, reason. He's going to figure out that he's going to think in his mind eventually, well, he could have the queen of diamonds with the king of clubs, so he was dead on the floor. So he's not dead, basically. He, he could win with a diamond on the river, and that's going to put him over the line where he's going to raise it. Yeah, and if he does raise here, Phil, it, it, there's going to be so much in the pot. I mean, I, I wonder if there's going to be, if it's just going to be academic by the river, <coughs> if they're both going to have to get the chips in no matter what comes. It, it's it's actually a small I think it's nearly a click raise here 46 12. to 100 to 112 I think sorry 112 so you know in a tough spot here I mean you know but you can't yeah. fold a set well I mean, you have to try and see the river don't you well of course he's not folding but I mean but Talal, from what you know about Jason, this sort of thing, I mean, Talal has to think, okay, I'm beat here, right? I mean, no? Well, that's, I mean, you know, it, that that's that's always a question, right? I mean. Yeah, that is the question. That is the question, and the river. Now, I'm the way sure, things. I'm not really sure that Jason's going to fear the board pairing all that much. Of course, he doesn't want it, but, you know. Right. And the way Talal's been running. Worst card in the deck for Jason. Now Jason has to check. Wow. Could Talal bluff, bluff him off this? No. That would be insane. It would be because check. you can only get someone off a low flush. It's just, it's just crazy. Jason, how's he running? Oh, my goodness. And he's running about 550000 worth. Oh, my goodness. I'm feeling every part of it. 
And when you when you can outdraw Talal Shakurchi in the form that he's in, you know you're running okay. Yeah, it, it's just incredible. Crazy. Yeah, he hit the flush and drinker, dodged and the house. Running through your veins, and now you're hyper. You're like <laughs> there a comes Rankemeyer getting like busy for about 14. That sounds like fun. Queen Jack of Diamonds. Tony G with jacks. He's really, his, his fortunes have been dictated by his big hand so far. That hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Sexiness has to be discarded. And I like to play with Tony too. And Even I like more. to play, it's a little exciting. And there's Jennifer oh Tilly. My. Oh, oh my, oh my, <laughs> she waited. And look at this, Tony G has to call and he's dead again. Oh. I had a queen though. And a jack. Queen and a jack? Yeah. I'm running really realize? bad. I don't know how what I can do there. There's only one jack left that I have. I mean, if, if it comes a jack on the flop and a queen on the turn, you, you, can, you can pretty much agree that we're not going to be seeing Tony G around here anymore. <laughs> Look at Tony G. <laughs> Look at him. You know, <laughs> nobody in poker sulks I'm like Tony G. Queen and jacks out. All the jacks are out. That's right. Maybe all the jacks are out. No, there's one left from him. He is the champion brooder. <laughs> he is not what a happy what a, man. What a situation. Perfect. <laughs> Tony G, I mean, come right. on, you got to give him credit, though. He Beautiful. got his money in with Queens, played another him. pot with Queens, oh. and now he's Jack. I mean, actually, <laughs> he's about to get a bagel. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, oh, what a flop a for him. Oh, and this is probably his God. best kind of flop for getting out of this, isn't it? Oh, that's the, 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 you, now, you Jennifer Tilly has about 100k <laughs> back. Got to come seven queen, all, seven or queen on the river. Well, there's four sevens and one queen. Five outs. Close. Close enough. Well done. Well done. Yeah, bam. Think of that. Tobias had the queen jack, and for Tony G, the bagel. That's very significant. Don't get too excited, Phil. Zero points for G. Every other player guaranteed at least two, which should get the chips moving a bit. We've lost Tony G from Group B's first league match. Now there seemed to be a real turning point there where the cards just went against you. Talk to me about uh, about your feelings about the match. Just just normal, just that's the way it goes. It's uh, a great start, everything was going well and then uh, it all fell apart. Like I couldn't, I couldn't really do much about it. So it's... Uh, I brought in a bagel today. But it's not the end because we've seen people take a bagel in a heat and go on to win it. So uh, coming back in your next heat, would you want to have a different seat draw? Is there anyone that you would like to mix up a little bit? It doesn't really matter. I'll just go and play and see what happens. And I'm not, I'm not bothered. Just, just play, just get through. So it's still early. It's still early and these bagels don't matter. No. Now I know I have to start winning. I'll do my best. Okay. Maximum points next heat. Thank you. Thank you. We are down to seven players in Group B's first league match. Plenty more action to come here in London after the break. Tony G, the only player to take part in all the Premier League seasons, has had a disappointing opening heat. He's our first player out, and we are down to seven players. The race to win the maximum 16 league points continues. Wow, the tension has broken. Look how relaxed these guys are now. They're all chippy and chattery now that there's only seven. I mean, Tony's record, you know, has been so up and down in this Premier League that you're kind of always looking to see which Tony G is going to show up. And if it's the Tony G that's going to just monopolize the bagels, I mean, that's just fantastic for these guys. Yes, yes. It's like free money. Yes. But to be fair, Tony G, I mean, <laughs> he played Queens, Queens and Jacks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he's on the rail. <laughs> <laughs> he was basically the tightest player at the table, right. and he stills first up. Yes. <laughs> Look at Talau, four deuce of diamonds, just relentless. Oh, he ran right into Rankemeyer again, though. So this has been an open from Mercier 
I no, no, no. Phil Locke opened with the ace four of spades, and I think he's Phil's playing. You know, he's he got away with the ace deuce of spades, so he's he still has to pedal to the metal. He, I think Phil Locke's a very smart player. He's going to adjust maybe and maybe be a little more careful. And for Talal, I mean, he actually put in about a quarter of his stack here. Phil, is this? Uh, I guess it, it looks very strong, or yeah, obviously Tobias is not going to go for it, having the ace king. But would this have gotten through otherwise? Maybe it might have gotten back to uh, Locke would have folded, and maybe it gets back to Mercier, and Mercier just ships it with the sevens. One thing Mercier does have right now is a whole lot of chips. He covers everyone else left in this hand by a fairly significant margin. <laughs> Phil's looking down at the table. <laughs> See, <he's laughs> is he trying to tell everyone that he's folding? Is that is no, that what? No, no. I think I think he's sinking in his mind. I better play tighter. I better play tighter. I better play tighter. <laughs> <laughs> Pass. So does Jason, really. It's a three-bet yeah, and a four-bet. He's going to snap the They got in our pass. way of having some fun, Jason. And pass. And poor Talal probably feels like he's not 100% sure right now if Tobias was playing the cards or the player. No, he knows. He knows. Yeah, when you make a big three bet and the big blind wakes up and makes a big raise, I mean, it's just like 99% of the time they're going to have it. I mean, it's, you know. On the other hand, you know, maybe only 97% of the time because because of the way Talal's been, you know, three betting. Right. Well, pass, pass. Click raise here oh. from Jason. Pass. Pass. Uh, that's wrapped that up. Let's Dan find something. He hates the pocket pairs under the gun, but give this man an ace in the big blind, do an under the gun raise. <laughs> you cannot get him off it. I mean. Well, there's not that many bad flops for Dan. One of them be like. You're going to say ace 10? <laughs> well, I was going to say seven high or eight, seven deuce or something. I just have the stake size of every player. That'll probably be the case in Wow. Wow. Bingo. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> well, the, the re one reason this is dangerous. Well, RFID chips on everything, and Uncle Sam will be wired into the exact alien and every player who's like scanned in the whole of like. Here, you know, Would Mercier perhaps have played a king jack like this? I mean, is. is and, yeah. and maybe yeah, some better aces as well. <laughs> but with this stuff, now you have to I think that Dan knows Jason's going to bet an ace on the flop. So I feel yeah, like Dan like knows he had the best hand on the flop. And like then like when you know you have the best hand on the flop, it's hard to see how the 10 helps somebody. But I think that happens more to uh, great read people with like the really great reading skills. I'm not saying Dan has it or doesn't have it. But yeah, I know yeah. I get in trouble like in a spot like this when a 10 out. comes. So because you know, would Daniel know that Mercier doesn't have an ace, hard for you to lay it down to the raise here. Right. Obviously. Right. I mean, that's what that's what gets me sometimes. The mist when a mystery card comes off on on the turn, and you're like, wait a minute, how did that hit him? He's perplexed. And he might not ever catch it because the, if he's really clever. He's. And I guess one of the problems here, Phil, is that the worst hand Mercier could have is, is probably a big draw, maybe a, a combo flush straight draw, which is... Dan, which Dan may well get away from this hand. Um, it's, it's, he probably has to study a little while longer if he wants to fold. He may well get away because he doesn't really have... He, he's either dead, you know, or he has the best hand. 
But if he's dead, he doesn't have any redraws. It's not like a jack or a king could save him or a heart or a diamond. And when you're when you're against Jason here, aren't you thinking you're going to be facing a big river bet nearly all the time anyway? Well, Jason didn't raise very much, so that's what got down. Here we go. Shaq drawing dead. Mercy are trying to make funds. Oh, what a... What a blank. If Mercier was going to have a flush draw, you kind of feel like it would be the diamonds, not the hearts. So I like Jason's bet raise there. That was a nice raise. If he would have raised more, he gives Dan the opportunity to fold. Oh, don't do it, Dan. Or is that, is that a nice blocking bet that perhaps represents a flush? Can Jason sniff this out? Gonna bet more. <laughs> uh, that's what Jason's thinking. He's thinking about raising, but he's uh, he's gonna study another ten seconds and call. So he wants to raise, but in the end, restraint will win over greed. Or will it? Yes. Oh. Oh, Dan Shack won a small moral victory, but he still lost the pot. <laughs> <laughs> and for Mercier, up above 600K here, Phil. He's, he's playing smooth and hitting cards when he needs them. Yeah, Dan was making a defensive bet there. I, knew you were much more. I, <laughs> I probably wouldn't have called, but it was my only chance to win the pot. I had some bad cards done today. <laughs> Blinds up to four and eight thousand with the thousand, Angie. I was getting all like. Now this is when things start yeah, to get a bit serious. Shaq probably pretty happy with his 350 or so thousand stack. He's been <laughs> in a lot of pots, had a lot of volatility to his stack so far this heat. When Tilly flatting with the 10 9 suited, is Rankemeyer going to put pressure on this pot? Very interesting. He has to he has to make a decision, and what he should be looking for, you know, uh, is if I make a re-raise and see there's extra incentive for him to re-raise and just take it down because Jennifer called. So he has to try to read Dan, and he just opted to f to flatten to try to flop a set, which. Is it 20 straight? 20. Wow, it brings gives Kurganoff in there with uh, King Queen. Wow. I mean, it should. Is there any? Yeah. Kurganoff is playing super tight, but he can't get away from King Queen in that spot. Jennifer wow. Tilly has flopped a straight and a flush draw. Kurganoff with top pair. And Dan Shack does have a belly buster. And the backdoor flush draw. Wow. Jennifer checked a straight flush draw. Very, very, very tricky. Now she needs an eight. Or a queen for a straight. More She's outs for her. All over this board. Check. Time for Kurganoff to get a bet in? Yeah, it's time for him to fire. He needs to fire about 43,000 or something. You know, he's only got uh, 224. This is, uh, this is starting to think about where it may cost him his stack. It's a big bet, but Jennifer Tilly's sitting on over 450K. She's not getting away from this. Well, she may move in and then he enforce him. And I don't know, he, he might call here. You called all it, Phil. In. And how, wow. how tough or easy call is it here for Kurganoff? I mean, if she's doing this with a value hand, he's dead, right? Yeah. I mean, he has just a tough, tough, tough spot. But seven really motivated you. Didn't have that motivation before <laughs> for the pot. 
didn't have that motivation for the pot. So is, is he trying to he, say she has three sevens? Yeah, he said the seven must have hit you. He didn't have that motivation before for the pot. And this is what I was talking about earlier, Phil, when I said that Jennifer does have a lot of strengths in this game. Uh, she, one thing is she understands that if you put pressure on somebody, uh, you know, there's two ways to win the pot, and she's good at that. And that was a really tough spot for Kurganov. I mean, a really tough spot. It's a solid one for sure. But I still feel like I'm a chip leader, so it's not so bad. I was like, hey, 150, you know? Yeah, you're in good shape. Phil Locke is not a chip leader. He's sixth out of seven right now. <laughs> 500, 100. 500, You win some hands, you have some chips. You lose some hands, you have less. Oh, that's the definition of temptation. You tell yourself you're going to play tight, and you pick up the 10-jack suited. Look at him. <laughs> he <can't laughs> Look at him. He, he can't, can't help, help it. it. <laughs> He's an addict. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. You could lead a horse to water. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know. I just kind of want to see him get re-raised here <laughs> just to see what he'll do. <laughs> you have to. 6 p.m. or something? Yeah, and thinking about it, I mean, a re-race would be a good move here. Well, you just had a break, break. So yeah, but I just remember the, sc the yeah. schedule, I think. That's what it said. Mm. Yeah, I, think I think Phil's going to get this through. He's got three more to go. Oh, it's Jason. Jason could easily make this, like... Now, that's odd. Called. That was wow. odd, Phil. I mean, obviously, Locke doesn't have enough back for Jason to set mine, so what's the idea? Is he trying to be deceptive? Yeah, I, I don't. That's a very interesting play. I think that uh, I think Jason has 500,000 in chips, and I think he's just trying to protect his chips. I would like to see him raise there. Pretty sweet flop. Two under cards of the four. And as you mentioned, now Jason put off the tough decision, but now he's got one. You know, I think Jason should have uh, should have known how many chips Phil Locke had to start with the hand with, and um, and then knowing that he only had 150. Wow. I, I'm I'm pretty. This is pretty interesting line he's taking. I kind of thought that after he's. Just called on the flop. He's definitely going to fold the flop when he misses. Now Phil Locke has dug himself a big hole. Wow. Jeez. There's the third four for Mercy. Just <laughs> in case. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Jason, I think this pot's over. Jason, like, has to bet it now. <clears throat> the problem <laughs> is that, you know, if, if Phil Locke was bluffing with ace nine, he has a five as a live card on the river. And Jason does not want to let him get there for free, so he, therefore he has to bet some. That's what he's done, and Phil Locke's demise could be on the rise. Phil just can't do it. He just can't fold. He told me this on the way over. <laughs> Jason beats me in every hand, Jennifer. What should I do? Kill him. I know I get called and I'll lose. Yeah. <laughs> what the Oh, I don't know. This game is tricky. Uh, it's hard to know when to, to bet sometimes. Oh. But I guess oh. if you're going to make an error one way or the other, probably better to just be more cautious than. I'd rather my errors come in the form. Nice. Of and how funny is this? Just when Shikarichi gets in the danger zone again, the Lord delivers. If I uh, get one or the back. poker gods, anyway. I do? Oh. He's, uh, like the he's getting the idea. right. Oh, <laughs> this is not the right oh, hand at the right time. Well, I don't know who's delivering, but if he has Jackson, Dan check has Kings. I'm not sure it's the Lord. Yeah, it's not delivering. It's deliverance. Yeah, volume wise, but the chart <laughs> of actual quality of. Stuff, if you've seen that movie. <laughs> Four gold, but whatever. You said the, the volume. Is, the volume is what counts. Oh, the, they both have importance. They both. Have it shouldn't take too long to get the money in here. Yeah. Those guys go out into the world and find those massage girls and pull them in. Yeah. 
I don't want it uh, myself. I don't like Three to be touched, but... Wait, but except by me. <laughs> I can touch. Backs, except by Phil. Wait, Jack, King, Jack, Jack, King, King. <gasps> wow. And for Talal Shikerchi, this is about 80% of the time walking. Two points not going to be what he had his eye on here. Four and a half to one favorite he was pre-flop. Well, you can see the odds, so it's about four to one. Now, do you feel comfortable? Not yet. Yes, yeah, or no. Not. Of course, I'm not until the end. And I like, we're friends, so I don't like it either way. Friends off the table, perhaps. But right now, Talal Shikerchi, two points. Certainly not out of it. Well, it's two points here for you going on into the next heats. You've had a chance to, to get to know a little bit more in this structure what the players are going to be playing like. Any thoughts on a, a different seat draw for the next time? Who you might like to have on your right, your left? Um, no, I don't mind. From this table, I don't mind, actually. No one's playing in a, in a kind of particularly aggressive way or, diff or dangerous way that's very difficult to deal with. So normally that kind of player you would want on your right. But, but here it's nobody's so far going that wild. Maybe, maybe as the uh, format moves on, maybe perhaps they'll open up. But so, so far, it's, most people seem to be playing pretty cautious. Will you be keeping your eye on the players as this heat kind of finishes out to see what they do do? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'd be interested to, to, to pick up any information I can from, from the rest of the, of the game. Okay, well, thank you so much. We'll see you in the next heat. Not at all. Thank you. We are now down to six, and Phil Locke is very happy right now. He has survived two players in what has turned out to be a disaster heat for him. Jennifer Tilly, on the other hand, has now managed to climb the leaderboard and sits at the top with 661,000. Next time we see who can take down maximum points as the players make a bid to climb the league table for a chance to progress through to this season's final. See you next time for the conclusion of this Premier League match here in London. Shack attack. Twice going up. I wish I went to bed earlier. I wish I was richer and younger. Shack attack once again. The torture keeps grinding on.